So, that was a bad intro. Um, episode 16 of Something From Everyone. We are here live with Eric DiCarlo. Eric, I appreciate you having me out, man. How are you doing? We're good. We're good, man. I'm grateful to be here. Absolutely, man. So, I started the podcast. It's called Something From Everyone. And I've always been kind of self-conscious and weird about the name. But the idea came from this idea that you can learn something from everyone and that I've enjoyed learning something from everyone. And I think from you, I gained that this was possible. And I think that for me early on was really important of like, I came from a college academic, like normal background and then meeting you and seeing someone who was finding success in video and making people feel good on camera and doing it in a way that felt ethical <laughs> was really important to me to, yeah, gain some appreciation and believe that the thing was possible. Um, so I guess I wanted to first start off with where you kind of got into the video and the music world. Um, yeah, going through your Facebook, I know you have 455 videos out right now. So I wanted to kind of dive back into video one. Yeah, where is your early days in music? Where do you kind of get into this world? Uh, well, first of all, I, I want to say I think you would have got into this world whether you met me or not. And to give anybody some backstory, uh, Peter was on one of my early, early videos with a band called In Depths and Tides. They were awesome. Shout out, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, I was there guys. doing photo, yeah, kind of helping out. And I don't think I had shot a music video yet, or maybe I'd done a three or four or something. And I was, yeah, kind of getting a sense of the world. Uh, so, yeah, seeing that working example is valuable. So, yeah, I appreciate you having me out. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're a good dude, and you would have continued doing good dude things <laughs> as you currently are. Um, I appreciate that, yeah. But so, yeah, one cool thing. Um, first music video uh, started really was right here. Um, I used to record bands in this studio. Mm -hmm. um, behind you is a window that, you know, we have people stand on the other side, track vocals, track drums, whatever. Mm -hmm. I've since put my drums in here because I do videos in there. But my first couple of music videos were shot in this basement. This is the basement of my house. And um, this is where it all started. And this is where my full circle brought it back to when mm -hmm. I was going to do a band again. This is also where my my old band used to rehearse as well back in 2008. Okay, so there is old bands. Yeah, yeah. there is. Are you playing music before you get into filming music videos? Or is the camera what gets you into the music world? Um, so I've always been a music guy. I've always been a drummer. Um, didn't have many friends growing up. And music kind of opened that, that door for me. Um, 2010, 2011, my, my aspirations were destroyed. Like my band fell apart. I didn't end up playing Warped Tour. Didn't get the record deal. Yeah. MySpace ended. Facebook became a thing. Um, really kind of tore me apart. And I tried to get things going for years that ultimately pushed me in, into the behind the scenes things and the, more of the culture, like focusing on other things outside of um, the actual music. So I've really spent, I'd say, 10, 15 years focusing on other things that have nothing to do with me playing drums, although that's what I've always cared about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it all started here, um, recording bands. My first uh, video I ever shot was for a band, and I did their EP, wrote their EP with them. Um, second video was right in the next room. That's cool. Third video was like behind a high school. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know, it started with the production as well, so you're helping write the EPs and then doing the video as yeah, well? I, I had done production for quite a few years. Um, gotcha. I have equipment lying around that's ridiculous. I got old school mics. I got like a $2,000 compressor over there and Axe Effects on the floor. <laughs> Oh, this is a good spot for it, yeah. Yeah, it's all just been sitting here for, <laughs> yeah. since like 2015, literally. Hell yeah. Um, and it, it catches a lot of people off guard now that I'm in a band mm -hmm. that I play music because nobody even knew that I was playing. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing for years. I've just been writing EPs and just throwing them in the trash. And... That's cool, yeah. <laughs> I, I can play a little guitar and not enough to be in a band, but enough that it makes me comfortable on set when I'm talking to a guitarist and I have some sense of what they're going through. And I'm sure as you're getting into the music video world, that's a huge key for you to yeah be able to talk to people and access. And because you helped record the music and you know how to play it, there's a a sense of like, oh, this is how I'm going to get the best out of you. This is how I can yeah, coach you into the best version of you because you've been through the experience. Well, I think I know a lot of guys out there that would love to have you in their band. <laughs> um, maybe. Um, but hell yeah. So we said we started recording the EP here. And of course, that now comes full circle to the Face Yourself EP. And you said that was recorded also in this exact room? Uh, yeah. In February, we started tracking in this room. Um, my silly yeah. question there is I don't see a computer. I don't see the stuff. Was there a temporary setup here? Is there a setup somewhere yeah, else now? Yeah, so I moved it into into my bedroom because gotcha. it's just it, it's better for my brain to have like it goes like my my bed's like here computers here mm -hmm. e-kits here a yep. bunch more guitars here and i just like wake up and i just see it and i'm like oh i should probably practice that's great These kids Dude, are fast now <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm in between housing situations or yeah my lease is coming up and i'm starting to think about yeah what is my next plan and i've had this dilemma of like 
I have always worked in my bedroom, and I joke that I kind of like sleeping in the lab. And I've always hoped that I had an office and somewhere to move out to. And I'm hearing you say that you kind of like sleeping in the lab, so to speak, as well as sleeping and waking up, but staring at the computer or the drum set and kind of being ready to get into the day. Do you have you worked in an office out of your bedroom, or has that always been home? Um, so when I did audio, I pretty much work here exclusively. Mm -hmm. I would spend eight hours here a day just sitting here mixing whatever. Um, so it's actually kind of weird. This is the first time I've ever had my computer in my room. Interesting. Okay. Um, it's just I just have so many things going on here and there and every other aspect of my life that yeah. I just put it as close to my, <laughs> my bed as possible so I could just like wake up and be like, yeah, I should do that. Or you're a piece of shit. A shorter um, walk before you get distracted by something along the way. <laughs> yeah. Plus, like, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm rehearsing in here now. I just shot mm -hmm. Left to Suffer in the next room over. Hell yeah. Um, there's just so much stuff everywhere that having my $8,000 computer is like, yeah probably not smart <laughs> yeah yeah i feel that um awesome so yeah we said we recorded the ep and yeah i've been curious about the story of the ep i know the whole band is a huge story and of course yeah from kind of going through what's been publicly shared i know the band feels like it was curated by hand it feels like you handpicked people from not just across this part of the country but across the entire country and the world at the end of the day um yeah how did face yourself come together and yeah i guess what was it like getting back into music after so many years of being on the other side of the camera um it definitely wasn't a smooth transition, but um, I'd been talking to my boy Tom for a while. He used to be the guitarist in a band called Sentinels, who I also worked with. Um, he's always been a good friend of mine. I always felt like he was like a dude that represented my company in my like early 2017, 2018 video reel. He was in it mm -hmm. when I launched my clothing line, which I'm actually repping. Hell yeah. Um, he was like one of the models. Like I featured his old videos in, the mo in that video from the... I, fe I featured like him headbanging in the the clothing commercial essentially from his past video. So I always felt like he represented something that I believed in, which mm -hmm. was just the future of music. He was mm -hmm. a hype guy. And yeah, we, st we just started like, you know, talking, jamming concepts, ideas about getting it going. And we were both in a position where we were like, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. And I, um, in, in November on my birthday, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do something that my mom would want and I'm going to put a feeler out there. And I, on my birthday, November 5th, this is like, what are we in April now or something? Yeah. yeah. April, December, January, I'm so February, bad about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> not that long ago, I uh, put a feeler out there and I just had so many people reach out to me. It's cool. Just from a feeler. Mm -hmm. I was really shocked how many people actually believed in me, even though I haven't even put any drum content out. Yeah. In yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And it just opened a lot of doors that I um, just really just started walking through and each person is a main character story mm -hmm. <laughs> um i think the obvious first character then is uh, your vocalist from france i'm drawing a blank on her name at the moment but yeah, yeah how do you yeah, find yeah. someone from yaya yeah 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 uh, yeah yeah am i saying that correct mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, how do you end up sourcing her where does she come from it's all the yeah you said you have a ton of people reach out yeah how is she the one <laughs> who stands out to you yeah so we i had a bunch of people reach out and at, at the time that i posted that we had like two tracks that were like rough demos okay um the dude that would end up engineering our ep actually took a stab at mixing them and he murdered them so we actually had really solid sounding um demos like our, our, <laughs> when you said murder i thought bad murder and i was no, like oh no no like <laughs> slam dunk like, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, we were like oh damn okay <laughs> yeah. this is sick so we had two pretty solid demos that i had sent to everybody mm -hmm. and um we'd gotten like i said a couple bigger names and a couple people that really caught me off guard mm -hmm. um I think we had maybe like 15 auditions or something. That's awesome, like yeah. some, some obscene number for considering that like I didn't yeah. tell anybody we were doing anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just said that I wanted to start a band. That's all I said. Um, and yeah, we had all these really good auditions. We had one dude in particular that was just slam dunk, just mm -hmm. like really reminded me of my boy Will, just right there mm -hmm. skill-wise. Um, and just looking at the raws, they – actually kind of reminded me of Will's mm -hmm. and I used to record Will like way back in the day actually right where we are here um like I recorded his, his old auditions for Awaken Providence and mm -hmm. some of his early covers so just That's looking cool. at it, I was like this is like this dude is deathcore mm -hmm. and the whole band was like yeah this guy's kind of good like we should probably grab him but then for whatever reason this mm -hmm. no-name girl from France mm -hmm. 23 years old I was just like really just intrigued by her mm -hmm. she was just like she was just putting up covers and just people in France were just writing sexist, disgusting shit to her. That's horrific. Yeah. And, yeah. And I was just like, the fuck? This girl's so good. And yeah. 
so, something about her just always stuck out. And I, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, guys, I kind of like want to take a chance on her. Mm-hmm. And um, everyone's like, I don't know, France, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, it's understandably, yeah. And I was like, no, guys, like, I think she's the one. That's cool. And I like called her a few times, like, or I couldn't even call her. I FaceTimed her, mm-hmm. like, to just be like, hey, so, like, you sure you want to be in a band? And like, so, what you mean is there's no international phones? You need the Wi Fi to yeah, get in touch yeah, with yeah. her? Yeah, messenger yeah. called her, which I do yeah. for everybody anyway, yeah. so it doesn't matter. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just, just kept like following up and just being like, mm-hmm. you sure? Like, you down? Like, yeah. do you really want this? Because I'm going to take this pretty seriously. Yeah. And she just kept checking out and I just kept going back to the guys. I'm like, I think I have a good feeling about her. And, you know, I think it was like, I put the date up actually on one of my posts recently, but I think it was like December 7th or December mm-hmm. 5th. I called her to tell her that she got the gig and she like FaceTime, put her dad on the phone. She's like crying on the phone. Just that's special. Yeah. It was really like, I knew I made the right choice right there. That's cool. And then the moment it came out, I was like, yeah, my, my gut instincts, like, <laughs> hell yeah, that's sick. I know something. <laughs> was that a, how is she aware of you? How did she become aware? I mean, was she a fan of the music videos and knew you as a director? Or where was uh, her she connection? Was, I, I think she had followed my work to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had our, so we, we put out a track called Hypothermia, which we shot on the, the next room over in that mm-hmm. little area, the little freezer. Um, and we had that, that featured a dude named Christian, mm-hmm. who we had originally been talking to, or he had you know, followed up, but he's in a really good band. So it wasn't really like, yeah, it didn't really make sense, but it, 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 he just got tagged so many times that like mm-hmm. he, he hit us up and he's like, you know what, dude, I don't think I can do it, but like, you should check this girl out. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I ended up adding her and then I can't remember if she messaged me or I messaged her or something, but it was a referral from him That's cool. And okay. beca- because he got me in touch with her. He was the first feature on, on the record. Hell yeah. That's cool. <laughs> on, I call it a record, but it, to us it was really a demo because we wrote mm-hmm. it in like a month or two. That's crazy. Yeah. I also think it's a testament to her character and her uh, courage to submit to something that is US based of like, yeah, I wouldn't submit to a French based band. I would be too insecure, or too scared of whatever. And for someone to be bold enough and brave enough to take that chance, I think is also a, yeah, another testament to why she was the right fit yeah she's a badass she's a total <laughs> badass she doesn't even realize it but she is <laughs> that's it and it sounds like when you were finding her you already had uh, the rest of the band assembled more or less um yes i had so at that point i was uh i had tom and um i had one other member that i was originally going to get in the band at the time I can't remember. I got to actually look back on that's a really Mm -hmm. good question. But I had one other person that didn't ended up, you know, being a little too busy for Mm -hmm. it um, that I was talking to with Tom. And then around the time that we were saying, like, is this the girl? Like, we got pretty much everybody. Like, it it was like within a week or two, we went from like, I want to say me and Tom and like the one person that ended up not being able to work out Mm -hmm. to like the whole project to six people, not five people. Like it was like a very short period of time. Yeah. What makes you go with six people? I think it's three guitarists, right? Which is the the unique part of that. Yeah. So that, that, that's a funny one. Um, I'm a video guy. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I run a company called square of studios, as you already know. (laughs) So I do a lot of videos and I always love the aesthetic of having symmetry. And I was like, screw it. I'm doing two, two. Yep. I can totally relate to the six, but when I saw six, I assumed two vocalists is kind of the normal six or the default uh, no, six, but I that's wasn't really kind a fan of played of out and yeah, not, not current anymore. I have, so it's her center and then we got two on each side mm-hmm. and I'm just blocked, just hanging out, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it look aesthetically, it's very pleasing. So I wanted six band members for that reason. Plus it, I, I came from a background where I felt like not everybody wanted to contribute equally. So mm-hmm. having more people to contribute to the project could potentially gain more exposure, Interesting, yeah. help finance, like having six members is cool. And, you know, there was so many people in my circle that were down. Mm-hmm. I was like, let's have some fun with it. And Hell yeah. I think that was one of the smartest decisions I made, actually. I think the, uh, I would second that. I think the smart decision there was choosing to have fun with it and choosing to do something as a passion project that you just needed to get out of you in oh, some yeah. sense. And the fun part is, is uh, a very important note, too, because everybody's a main character. Everybody's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Everybody, besides Yaya, I know on a very personal level, like, mm-hmm. I get along with them. Like I've worked with them. I've seen them run bands on their own. Yeah. So even if I wasn't managing the project, they could easily yep. step up and just kick ass because they've done it before and they proved to me that they've done it before and they paid me. Mm-hmm. Like they've paid me out of their pocket probably yeah. 
more than some other people. My silly note here is that it's your personal dream team. It feels like you went and handpicked people that, yeah, fit the role exactly for what you wanted. I think that's a really, yeah, exciting place to be in. Yeah, now you've selected your piece. You've had an early release out that has had success so far. And yeah, to be culminating it with people you really care about, I think it's a, yeah, really exciting place to be. Yeah, I already, I already work with 50 to 100 bands a year. So yeah. if I'm going to spend more time with one yeah. band, I wanted to make sure that like they were people that mm -hmm. I like really wanted to invest in emotionally as well. Yeah. Um, I want to get to, so you mentioned that kind of starting the band was a rough transition just because you're moving behind the camera now. You're kind of going back into this role that is unfamiliar and uncomfortable and you're behind the kit, you're behind the people. Um, are you, I guess the first part there is, are you putting yourself behind the people because it's more comfortable than being on camera or is it, um, yeah, has it been tough to get onto camera or was that kind of a transition that you were excited and ready for? Um, I was, I was definitely ready for it. Um, the only thing that makes it hard based on the process you described is the fact that I'm directing my own videos and yep. I, that's, that's the part that makes it suck. And ass. editing it and trusting the camera in someone else's hand where I'm sure whoever you trust to film, I'm sure it's someone you picked by hand again, my but best it, friend, Matei, but Literally it's not you, my, it's not your hand. Friend. It is, <laughs> it, it, he can be as close as he wants to you, but he's still not you. And I think that there is a, if you've handcrafted every part of this project to then pass off the part that you are most expert in must be really tough. And yeah, it's a huge leap and a huge faith to put in him. Well, I actually had more faith in him than he had. Interesting. Like he, okay. was like, he kept asking me, he's like, is this okay? Is this, is this good? Is this good? Is this good? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, you're killing it. Like, chill. Like, it's, it's fine. Like, How was that when you got back to the editing bay where you're now? Um, yeah, I've had that process with the podcast. I guess I, I hate talking about the podcast on the podcast. It feels so pretentious. But I've had that thing of like, yeah, I've had to get past editing myself and be like, oh, that is just a person I'm working on that it's, you know, separating it from me. When you're editing, did you have the same problem of, yeah, with drums, there's the broken drum wrist that you catch or silly drum faces or stuff that we're separated from and other people but when it's you yeah now it's personal intimate and vulnerable in that sense um i think i'm naturally an editor that's mm -hmm. my strongest suit i would say out okay. of everything i do um so uh, editing was like the easiest part for me like that mm -hmm. I, I knocked them out fairly quick and mm -hmm. didn't really think much of it and band didn't have any notes or anything so i i enjoyed the editing part it was, it was the shooting moving the lights going yeah. back to behind like remembering my own parts and then mm -hmm. Like remembering that I got to swap the battery, or yep. just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think about all the little directors have all the batteries and all, yeah, all the other things that are running in your head on timers that are like the amount of equipment in my van is mm -hmm. just on absurd, absurd yeah. Mesa cabs, drums, like <laughs> yep. <laughs> cameras, lenses, yeah, stands, lights. Uh, given all of those tools and all those options, and of course you have the the warehouse production space that you're using, and what made you come back to the basement and do a yeah, I guess my first question is, yeah, why did you choose the snow and that, that aesthetic, that vibe, what made that treatment come to life? And also why do it in your own basement? Why not go to the big expert space that has all the options? So that's, that's awesome. Uh, first of all, we were supposed to do full band, but we mm -hmm. just got lazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we shot, we shot like the individuals here and it took too long and gotcha. we had B-roll for it too. And we were just yeah. like, eh, I don't want to go to the that the makes warehouse. Sense. Yeah. So we we ended up just squeezing in there, and we took the fish eye and shot yeah, yeah. the fish eye. But that was not our original intention. Interesting. That's, okay. That's part eight or part one to the question. Mm -hmm. Part two, um, the snow thing. So before the project even came into fruition, well, around when it was coming into fruition, we had a song, and I was I was. How do I describe this? Um, we had the demos and Tom is really big into like post-production. Like he just mm -hmm. sits around. I don't know what he does. And he just turns the reverb too high and just sure. writes these like 15 minute, like, like symphonic pieces, not even symphonic, but just shoegazy reverb intros. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I can see the video, what this is going to be and what this should be about. Mm -hmm. So for all our early songs, the first four songs we wrote, I wrote video treatments for them before we even... That's cool. Okay. Had, had like vocals, ideas. Um, I would ultimately write a lot of vocals from the video idea I saw in my head. That's really um, interesting. And before I even had a full band, I actually was like, we're doing the snow video. Um, I had a B-roll idea. I'm not going to say what it is, mm -hmm. but I had this whole idea that I didn't shoot. <laughs> didn't care enough at the time. <laughs> That's the truth though. Yeah, it's the reality of your own project. But I... I had this idea for the snow video and I actually ordered something months in advance mm -hmm. and I'll show you what it was. <laughs> Please do. Um, oh, it's right here. Okay. I thought I was going to fill some dead air for a second. So we have, oh. 
the the face yourself custom. Hell yeah. Specifically for gorgeous. snow. Yeah. It's got the snow finish. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. I was wondering if, uh, yeah, the logical thing is that you would have a treatment in your head that never quite made it to a song or just something that came to you and then you can kind of reverse engineer the song to it. And I was curious if that was a... Uh, yeah, I feel like normally songs are written by a, a musician who has a visual in their head, but they're not a video person. So the the depth which they can engage with that is limited in some sense. And then they come to us and say, I'm kind of feeling indoors or outside or bright or dark or whatever. And then we kind of uh, interpret that into video language. But yeah, you were writing it already in video language. Yep. So that is actually something really interesting that I all our demos and stuff, even the songs that I've written recently, mm -hmm. all have pre-written video ideas. They never make it to the video ideas. Yep. But just they have like a this is what I see to this and it's a way of setting a scene of establishing a vibe. Yeah, like I could like if I at any point I ever wanted to just do videos for all these things, mm -hmm. like I could have just I already saw it. Mm -hmm. um, that is one really interesting thing about our process. Is it accurate that there are ideas that just didn't like? Yeah, is there an idea that's been in your head for so long and never made it to X Band's video, so that now fits here, or was it something that you thought of as like, no, that is that's for me. I'm keeping that one. Um, no, it's it's my ideas tend to be simple, so mm -hmm. it's like, wow, I could totally see. So we have a song called Red. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, like we have a song uh, called Red. I yeah. clearly saw Reds and I mm -hmm. saw Road Rage and someone's chain smoking. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is like ripping. I, when I when I hear this breakdown, I'm just like, I imagine somebody just got in a fight, got in his car, just ripped a donut and just yeah, ran from the cops and then chain smoked five cigarettes yep. in front of like a neon light. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yep. Like, so then we obviously wrote Red about, mm -hmm. she wrote it, you know, that particular song about how she felt, but I had a whole idea, concept, visual, like Pinterest board prior to her even writing lyrics. That's cool. That's cool you guys kind of ended up in the same place by by happy coincidence, so to speak. Yeah, and, and I understand what she's going through and the type of person she is. So it's like I can give her concept direction mm -hmm. that she could work with. And then once it's in her in her wheelhouse, yeah, I got to go at it. Like, I got, I got shit to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that goes back to you mentioned you handpicked everyone because you trust them to be able to run their own band. And that's a similar version of, yeah, I trust that I'm going to give her enough and she'll do the rest. I don't need to micromanage. I don't need to edit everything and make everything perfect. It just, yeah, she'll get it done in a, in a way that I'm happy with. One hundo. Um, uh, which is sick. So I know that first video is called Hypothermia. I'm terrible with song names, so I've got them written down here. Um, the snow there is interesting to me, where I think rain is the element we see most commonly in videos, but water is a disaster to work with. And as I saw the snow, I was like, oh, that is so smart as a... It's a way to create an environment, but it's not messy in the way that water is. Like, it's a much simpler cleanup. Uh, what, yeah, the, what, like, made that come together, I guess? I, I'm stumbling. We just asked, like, we were just talking about kind of why the snow came together. But, yeah, why, why do it here? Why? So, the, the snow originally, I had, I had <laughs> not to give away my own idea that mm -hmm. I didn't even do. Um, I originally pictured, like, a real piece of shit business guy frozen mm -hmm under a piece of ice mm -hmm. that was just like he was the cause of all these things and just somebody getting okay. stabbed by an icicle just like i had this whole elaborate idea in my head mm -hmm. um prior to doing it it's just i just never did any of the cool shit and mm -hmm. i'm kind of glad i didn't because i don't because people kind of just like yaya like it yeah just, she's just the forefront of the two videos and People are pretty happy with that. I think that was smart, especially as a first video of just get yourself out there, get the face recognition, the brand recognition, just, yeah, maybe people identify you guys as a unit instead of putting an actor there that, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It panned out, like, in a way that it was just like, oh, like, people like seeing us headbang mm -hmm. really hard in a fucking snow room, like, yeah. freezer. <laughs> uh, it looks so cool. And I think it also gave you a lot of room in colors and posts to then play with the different vibes. I feel like you got three or four different scenes <laughs> out of just the snow scene because, yeah, white is such a diverse thing we can play with. I was joking with the band. Um, I was like, I was like, fuck this band, fuck this video. <laughs> like, my color presets that I made are called, like, piss. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, frozen, I think it was, like, one was, like, frozen death. Yep. <laughs> like, it, but piss was, like, it, the yellow filter in the video yeah. that um, I ultimately picked because Christian had like this like um, mustard colored jacket. Okay. So the the piss filter that I use in the video is a, is a preset that I made based on his jacket. Hell yeah. The piss. I've got a I've got a couple of those and none that I'm quite ready to say on air, but I'll happily yeah chat with you later about some of the <laughs> wild things I've saved. Coward. Um, part uh, <laughs> uh, part. Uh, 
Oh no. Uh, what also, that would have been your first time like playing together as a band in a room, right? Like it's not like you flew Yai out from France a week before to rehearse together. Was that your first time? Yeah. When she got here, we, we'd had, we'd had four out of five of the songs done and she was here for like six days, seven days or something. I can't recall. Um, this was in February, not that long ago. Mm-hmm. And we, it was like literally like record, 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 record music video, music video. She's out. Um, so it was like, we spent a lot of time together, but live rehearsals were like the last thing on our mind, which is something that's caught me off guard now that we're getting yeah. tour offers. That's exciting. Um, yeah. <laughs> we've been a band for one month as of yesterday. <laughs> um, Speaking of, how's the Spotify doing? We got an um, update on that? The On what exactly? Your number update that we were Oh, the monthly seeing? listeners? Yes. No, Spotify's down today. I don't know why. They're doing it. I think I saw Netflix was down today too. Um, yeah, but the the whole Spotify app is really cool though in general because it gives you all the analytics and mm-hmm. tells us where everybody's from and it's really cool to see that type of stuff, especially mm-hmm. considering when I was really my last serious serious band was around the MySpace days. Like I had stuff yeah. after, but nothing like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and they never, I never had analytics, and everybody was like, "Oh crap!" Yeah. Like only nine percent of our fans are women. Okay, cool. Like I didn't know that. <laughs> It's interesting, yeah. it's interesting to see all that stuff in the app. Yep, and demographics as well. I've heard it used, uh, talking with my buddy Jay, he does a lot of marketing stuff for tours. And I started to hear them do is when the tour is going through Nashville, you know, a month before the Nashville show, they start pushing the music video in Nashville. And then two weeks before, we start pushing the show. And it's kind of a gradual way to use the Spotify analytics of, yeah, reverse engineer where yeah, people are and how we know. can, yeah, target them. Definitely best. wild, like to say the least. Mm-hmm. Like, I look at that and I'm just like, whoa, like... <laughs> We don't have a lot of fans in France. That's very odd. Yep. <laughs> uh, so what makes Hypothermia the first single then? Of course, you have an EP done at that point. Uh, yeah, what makes that become the thing that you choose to put out in the world first? Um, our, our timeline was so tight mm-hmm. that we were like, oh, okay, we got to figure something out. We don't know mm-hmm. what we're shooting. We don't know who we're featuring. We didn't, oh, I, I had a general idea, but I, we didn't really know everything. Which is so much. atypical of any recording process where I feel like you arrive at the studio and things are a lot more done than it sounds like they no, were. When... We, we knew we weren't 100% done. We yeah. had four tracks that we were comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And I think Christian at the time. Um, yeah, we had generally known the features but um yeah we weren't 100 percent sure how everything was going to play out so we did have to wing a lot of things mm-hmm. i actually forgot your question but um what made hypothermia the first release so yeah okay. you have a bunch of songs so, like that one the one that so we dropped hypothermia at like eight something on a sunday night mm-hmm. uh, like four weeks ago and then monday morning we were so pleased by the response from hypothermia they're just like eh, take the whole ep take the other video you can have it all <laughs> i thought that was very smart and it i a lot of uh, people didn't think it was smart i'll tell you that much that we dropped two videos in 12 hours <laughs> i i could see that the reason i i liked it is because it's so atypical normally you get the video and then you just kind of let it percolate and to me to do anything different is a benefit in some ways just because it makes people talk and we're talking about the fact that you put out two videos the next day which is something in itself i mean there's no bad press or whatever the bullshit that's not quite true but in some sense yeah you created a conversation just by doing something different and that in itself isn't related to the music or the band but it does drive traffic it does ultimately help with the the marketing side of things it was cool too because we had gone we did really well with like some reaction channels like we got picked up by a few and a lot of them did double reactions they were like they didn't just watch the first one they're mm-hmm. like hold on we got two tracks that's smart so like this dude orion who's the man mm-hmm. he did both our tracks in one shot which was like super cool and that's like the key now right isn't it the youtube reactions and spotify playlists are like king like 1a and 1b in terms of streams um i mean we didn't get any playlisting at all Mm -hmm. um i mean we did drop our stuff relatively quick but yeah we didn't get any special playlists or anything um we got like a lot a lot of small playlists but Mm -hmm. nothing like big but gotcha. still, we're very happy with how it played out considering I dropped my music video on a Sunday night. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's smart. Uh, and then, yeah, so you said the next day the EP comes out, merch comes out, uh, another music video comes out. Uh, can I ask my assumption is that wasn't a surprise. My assumption is you dropped the music video Sunday night, knowing that Monday there was going to be something following. Yeah. Uh, we were happy with everything. So we just, we wanted everything out. We didn't want to hold on to anything. Mm-hmm. Just get it out. Uh, gotcha. And then why were those, so I guess then why is shadow self song number two, when you have an EP done, what makes those two become the first representation? So face yourself. Um, we had liked hypothermia a lot better. Hypothermia was also the first song we wrote. Got um, it. Shadow self was the second song we wrote. Um, we really kind of want, we had another track called red that, um, we could have easily done, but, um, yeah, it was just like hypothermia was like a little more modern and like, um, a little more 
younger friendly while shadow self is like a more typical deathcore song Mm -hmm. um and yeah we we felt like just maybe starting off with like the the more abstract one to be like hey we're here to do different things and Mm -hmm. weird things and then the typical deathcore song like kind of second but shadow self decimated hypothermia so interesting so people don't like people don't like different stuff they like you the never know stuff yeah yeah <laughs> just cool I'm, I'm down with it i think it's cool how we are so unaware of what people are going to react to sometimes that it's scary and vulnerable and terrifying as a creator of like oh we're making music videos and we're not even sure what people are going to like in them but it's also exciting that like yeah everyone's gonna attach to different things whether we expect it or not we were also so like in the process like like in it we don't necessarily realize so like shadow self starts off with like yeah, yeah, just spitting bars, mm-hmm. just speed rapping, basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or speed screaming, whatever you'd call it. Yeah. And we were just so, like, used to it that we weren't mm-hmm. like, oh, that's weird, shocking, very odd. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our brain didn't go to that. We were just yeah. like, eh, we like the end breakdown of hypothermia. Gotcha. Uh, and last Shadow Self question, I'm looking behind you, I see half the china on the wall. And as I was watching the music video, I, I noticed, it, like, the background was something, there's a hard edge, and I was like, that doesn't add up. And, yeah, my video brain dissects it and i find that yeah the half the china is in the video does that blow up on the set of the video is that an intentional choice or a problem the day of that you're just like okay well show's got to go on yeah i'm gonna be real i broke two chinas yeah in two days <laughs> i got a brand new one on there right now <laughs> I, uh, when i walked in the studio i saw that thing first i was like that's new i remember that there was only half of that in the music video yeah that's that's uh, that's uh new. my sweet water rep uh gotcha grateful <laughs> i bet yeah um was it there's a different fatigue of performing on camera where I assume you've rehearsed drums for a while, you've been playing drums for a while, but then when you're on set and you have to play the song five, six, seven times in a row, is there a different challenge there that you hadn't expected or did it all kind of go to plan? Um, the only challenging part for me was directing and playing in the video. So right, like yeah. having to go check the lights and then make sure my boy was like happy with the footage, even though it was great footage. Mm-hmm. Like I had to like, yeah, ch- you know, be like, oh, you should probably change batteries. So like, kind of like back and forth, like move lights around, like mm-hmm. the the whole directing and playing thing. Just playing was like really cool. Like mm-hmm. I could have done that for a million more hours. Yeah, even though my neck hated me at the end of the night. I bet. Um, yeah. I also feel like I, I learned a lot by doing two videos in two days. Okay. Because I have a lot of my bands that I. I like make them go hard. (laughs) Yeah. So I feel like now that my neck almost fell off, I'm like, all right, I can ask this. Interesting. (laughs) Yeah. There's an interesting level of empathy there that we empathy. That's a good word. It's exactly Um, what I wanted. It's like, you can't go to a tattoo artist that doesn't have a tattoo. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Or skinny chef is the other one that makes me laugh. Yeah. That's a great one. I like that one. (laughs) Just write that down. (laughs) I don't know if that totally works. I think you'd be a chef and also enjoy other ways of health, but, um, (laughs) I, uh, I trust a thick boy with food. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always been enjoying kind of going back to the early days of stuff. And so I went back, you posted uh, a list of videos kind of A through Z recently. And so I was enjoying kind of going that and picking apart some of your favorite videos and what you enjoyed. Uh, and one of the first ones that stuck on my brain uh, was a video from seven years ago. It was a rap video by a guy named Justin Hale. Uh, which is someone I went to high school with and not the same Justin Hale. Um, <laughs> but I was when I was watching it, I was, it felt like you had filmed and edited before. So you start music videos kind of seven, eight-ish years ago, and please correct me there. Um, but yeah, had you filmed before you get into music videos or are music videos kind of where you enter the film world? Uh, Square Up was technically conceived in 2015. That's when I really tell anybody. But I do have a couple of years of experience where I was playing in music videos, where I like, mm-hmm. shot some bootleg videos, where like I owned a photo camera mm-hmm. so i had my hands in it like from like maybe 2013 2014 okay and i learned a lot but didn't know what i was doing didn't quite like i, I have like two years of video experience prior to square up but square up i really say is 2015 i think i did that video in 2016 but i just love my boy justin so much that i threw that in there gotcha. shout out justin <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> uh and then obviously square up has gone through so much since then i think it's been incredible to watch it grow and i'm sure it's probably hard for you to imagine all that it's grown into or hard to accept all that it's grown into at times um but i think the big talking point there for me is the lorna shore video with 15 million views and it's a it's a cultural talking point and i think it's interesting that you are on the creative side of that that's not the the sonic side of it but yeah you are a part of that release i mean what is that like to be a kind of on the cutting edge of the culture that you grew up enjoying so much um, I've had Will's back for a really long time. Mm-hmm. I've believed in him probably longer than he's believed in himself. Um, and I saw I'm some of the early covers as well in here. Yeah. Yeah. The early covers, like one of the first comments on like our first cover is like, I think I wrote someday this video is going to have millions of views. And mm-hmm. now that's got like bajillion upvotes. It's on. Yeah. Like, and I've that's cool. just happy that everything worked out for him. Um, and it was just really 
it just that process just taught me a lot about what people care about in music. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, and it's helped me a lot full circle to the face yourself days. Yeah. When you got that song, did you feel like you knew what it was? Dude, I told Austin, I was like, I was like, yo, this, I wish I had the text. I can't get that phone to work, but it, I texted him. I was like, yo, this could go viral. Like just kind of like a yeah. bullshit. Like, yep. like, uh, Hey, yo, this is sick. Like this could yeah. go viral type message, not bullshit, but yeah. Um, like I sent something like that mm-hmm. and I can't get, <laughs> that's annoying yeah it'd be nice to have that one that's a good one to print out and put on a t-shirt for that yeah if i put that on a t-shirt that would be funny because <laughs> i heard that part i was like me being you know a deathcore kid a breakdown yep. kid yeah like i was like whoa that part's sick it's something new yeah yeah so I, that, that whole process is just surreal like you know I'm, I'm very happy that a band i worked with is able to just kick down every door and just mm-hmm. make more money than anybody else in a yeah. genre and just play just get in video games just you name it mm-hmm. they're just killing it they just and they're just kicking open more doors for bands like for everyone like else. mine yeah. yeah just kicking doors open i hadn't realized all the backup you had with them of yeah vocal covers with will years ago and you mentioned austin so i assume you have a relationship with him whether you've worked with them and other bands of so, yeah it's cool that you i'd actually only mess, met austin once and that was on our my shadow of intent video oh hell yeah okay um and he was a super cool dude and i always kind of stayed in touch with him and mm-hmm. he had my back for that process which is really really cool hell yeah yeah i think the the theme here that's cool to me is that it's everyone is a homie that's then growing up with you and it's cool to the whole community has grown up around you and you've been a uh, part of helping them grow and receiving end of some of their growth. And it's cool. The symbiosis there of everyone. Yeah. Kind of finding success in their own way, in their own niche. Yeah, man. I keep my head low. I, you know, I, I try to always do the right thing just mm-hmm. like yourself. And I've gotten some W's from it that I'm very grateful for and absolutely try to bring up everybody I can. Absolutely. The, the Lorna video is always funny to me because it's one of the only ones I remember the first time I watched it or most music videos you see. And that one, I was sitting in Vegas. I was filming out there and I was on a hotel couch. And it was one of those where everyone's in like the other room and I'm kind of like the first minute in the song and I start laughing. I'm like, you guys got to come in here. And one person comes and we start the song and then we get a minute and a half in. We're just laughing again. of like, this is crazy. I can't believe this is real. And the next thing you know, everyone's in the room. And it was one of those in my head at the time. I was like, oh, okay, this is something different because I've never had anyone come watch a music video over my shoulder ever in my life. Like no one has ever been. And so to have that kind of catch fire so quickly. And I guess there's a pun there that I didn't intend. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think it's just a really cool moment. And yeah, it must be cool, like I said, to grow up in the industry and then help something that is so so close to the forefront of it. it must be really cool. Uh, the other one that stood out there, uh, there's a Gideon video for Too Close that's always stuck out of my brain because there's a scenes of a rat in a maze. And I've always wondered, did you get a rat and build the maze? Like, is that stock footage or did you practically set that up and make that happen? Yeah, we went to a couple of PetSmarts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that video was really funny because um, I had a pretty bootleg website for I'm not saying my current website is not bootleg, but <laughs> <laughs> I had a pretty bootleg website that yeah. was just like my portfolio link and then like it's such a hard thing content. to keep up with. Yeah. Yeah, I never cared. I still don't care. Mm-hmm. Um and there was the contact button, I didn't even know how it worked. Like I just had one. Um and one day it was like a Wednesday night or something like that. I get an email from somebody that I don't know and I just I didn't even check my emails at that point. This is like twenty eighteen or something or mm-hmm. twenty nineteen, I can't recall. Um and it was just like, hey, are you available to shoot Gideon? And I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it was like a weird, like, from Big Cartel something, something. Sure. S- it looked like spam. Yeah. Like, I was like, what the f-? Okay. Um, so I clicked it, and I was like, yes, I'm available something, something, mm-hmm. right away. And I was like, that's unique. <laughs> yeah. Gideon's ridiculous. That's sick. Yeah. I, like, pulled up their videos. I was like, oh, my God, this is the greatest <laughs> videos I've ever seen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And... It, it's, I don't remember exactly how it gone uh, went, but it was just like she responds back like a half hour later. Like I just got on the show mm-hmm. and I checked again, and it was just like, "Are you available for a call to shoot tomorrow or something like that Jeez. in Nashville, Tennessee?" Yeah, and I was like, "Yes," and I put my phone number, and then mm-hmm. I believe it. Yeah, and then I think it was Sean. Sean called me like right after that, the owner of Sharp Tone, mm-hmm. and was just like, "Hey, yeah, you you good for tomorrow? We'll get your flight right now." And then like they put me in touch with some lady who like bought my flight. And I go there and I get there and I'm just like, all right, guys, let's do a video. What do we have? And they're like, I don't know. Can you find us a location? I was like, that's not really just got to Nashville. I got to figure out a location. So I start cold calling places. I actually found a place that would end up becoming a really big facility. It was called the Warren Paint Center. And they were just starting off building sets. And now they're like a really big video place oh, yeah. so you're but, calling sound stages were you calling local businesses who are you calling i was just calling like any film thing i could find okay 
back in the day because mm-hmm. there wasn't really like peer like peer space was a thing but definitely not in nashville yeah um and i just was calling around and i just had gotten this dude's contact and i called him and he was the owner of a paint shop and he's like how'd you get my number i was like i got it offline and he's like oh well that's what you want to do it can you get insurance and i was like um i don't have enough time to get insurance for tonight but uh we'll sign waivers so yeah. dude let us come in um in the meantime we had shot in his shed and i literally wrote the storyline while i was there it was, wow. they were just telling me it was just about you know being stuck <laughs> and i was just like oh like a random maze wow well. yeah it's like we literally they had a wood shop in their backyard so mm-hmm. the whole day because we weren't allowed to use it till the paint shop closed okay. so it was like we we had like five six hours to blow mm-hmm. um so we just had went into the, the the paint shop and i had just rigged the light in the ceiling there mm-hmm. was like Oh yeah, that's an interesting part too. Rig light in the ceiling. There was like metal chains and like all this stuff. I threw that up too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was like metal grinders everywhere. There was like ten of them. So I had them grind the metal. So if, like, so sick, yeah. if you ever look at the behind the scenes video, you'll on my channel, you'll mm-hmm. see like all these like metal shards like stabbing me. And I'm just like, oh, that's annoying. <laughs> I as I watched it, I was wondering. My assumption is that with obviously camera, you can play with depth. So I assumed that they were ten feet from you and ten oh, feet from the artist. I had or a twenty-four something. millimeter. It's, I, I had two lenses at the time. Gotcha. I had a twenty-four cine and a fifty cine. Got yeah. Just getting so there's stabbed. no safety there. <laughs> so yeah, you are. It's for, not like stab stab, but it's like a burning feeling. Yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't want to get called out that by like stinks. woodworkers or yeah. like metal cutters. Or <laughs> Interesting. And of course, the other side is like that has to hit you and not the band. So like they, you can't... They, they didn't care at all. They're all like blue collar. Like gotcha. They, they could care less. Okay. They, they, they already do that. Got it. They, okay. they just wanted the, they're just in it to win it. They're it. that type of band. That's yeah. why they're Gideon. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's my little Gideon story. I Hell shot yeah. it in like one day. That's um, wild. Drew York had missed his flight. And so mm-hmm. we didn't shoot his shots till like crazy late. Um, yeah, it was a really cool one. That's wild. Yeah. Really bring that one up. I always forget about that one. <laughs> I was expecting to hear a story about, yeah, going to PetSmart and trying to tell them why you needed a one single rat. I swear <laughs> to God, you name any big video off my playlist, I got like 30 stories from them. I think that's the fun, uh, <laughs> I think that's the fun part of part of our job is that every day is so unique and there's so many of these jobs where it's like, yeah, you arrive in Nashville and you have to find a location and that's not fun in that moment. I'm sure in that moment your brain is saying, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Like, it's just panic alarms everywhere. But I'm, I'm uh, used to that. I'm, I'm a firefighter by trade, so absolutely. I, I go put out fires now. I've enjoyed, uh, I heard a sentiment that there are moments that are fun in the moment, but not fun to look back on, and stuff that isn't fun in the moment, but is fun to look back on. Yeah, the second one's my life. It is, and I think that's a very <laughs> common part of our job, and it's a, a weird thing of being in those moments, and I've learned to find some comfort of like, this stinks, but it will be a good story, and that gives me a little more energy to get through this thing and deal with some of the stressors because yeah i'm aware that in hindsight it'll all be a lot better than it is now yeah i got a lot of notches in my belt so that's why i enjoy podcasts Mm -hmm. and things like this Mm -hmm. because i just have so many stories that i don't publicly talk about yeah but like anybody that gets it you know a drink in my hand (laughs) fish them out of me absolutely (laughs) i think it's fun is that yeah i don't get we don't get to talk very often whereas we're directors are kind of also not for anything i shouldn't they shouldn't no. be telling all these stories <laughs> fair enough um, um but yeah we don't get to talk to you. and even with bands it's like we're on set and even when we're hanging with them even when they're our our good friend that we're on set with we still have a camera in our hand we're still thinking about lights and batteries and there's still other stuff and yeah i was yeah. trying to get you to use my stuff today like <laughs> i was like you want some lights like i got lights dude these lamps are perfect man my man's just killing um, it. just like no nah, i want a simple setup i just yeah. want to hear your voice yeah that's Great. that's to me Easy i think they crack my drink yeah, that's <laughs> good that's what i want i want an easy day where yeah hopefully hopefully no crazy stressors there um as we yeah kind of get to wrap it up here in the next little bit uh my last kind of talking point here is that as i started the podcast i had the sense of like or i use the word dilemma and i think it's a slight exaggeration but the dilemma of like is this me falling out of love with music videos and going somewhere else and the more i thought about it it was like no this is me being so in love with music videos that i want to find more ways to like interact with the world and interface with people and learn about them Has that been a similar experience for you with Face Yourself? Like when you're kind of dreaming of the band, is there a part of you that's scared to step away from videos or square up and pull back on that? Was that, were you ready to do that? What was that process like? Well, now you're focusing on something that's, that a lot of people don't focus on. And it's one of the reasons you're getting all the W's. Um, You're focusing on the culture behind the Mm -hmm. scene, all the things that make up what people see, because it's not just camera lenses and we're all people, we're all humans. We all have stories. We all have an intention. Like we're all trying to accomplish something that people may not necessarily understand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we fall in love with bands, but a lot of people don't understand why we like the bands Mm -hmm. when everything sounds so good, when everything is super produced. Mm -hmm. Like 
there's just so much more to the process and you're just focusing on other parts of the culture mm -hmm. and learning and developing, you know, as a video guy, as, as a person. Uh, was that a, a similar challenge for you to take on as you started to face yourself or were you kind of comfortable with where Square Up was so you were ready to dedicate a little time to a passion project? Um, the time, it definitely felt like the time was right and there'll never be enough time with Square Up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, but uh, yeah, I've learned more in the past month than I think I have in the past seven years. Hell yeah. Because I've just learned so much about the culture and what people care about mm -hmm. and the things that people actually focus on and it's... I, it's going to help me a lot going forward with my music videos and mm -hmm. helping people focus on things that aren't necessarily just like the lighting or or like we need some crazy high budget mm -hmm. location. There's so many other things that matter mm -hmm. that that make up what makes people like something. Mm -hmm. Like people don't just like Nike because they have the highest quality things. People like what Nike stands for. Yeah. I have um, no affiliation in Nike. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's interesting that you talked about the culture part of it. And I think, yeah, as you say, that's what always stuck out with me about metal and just the hardcore side of things. Um, and I think I currently listen to a lot more rap that I than metal, and I don't think that's what I love more. I think it's just kind of easy white noise that I can listen to and not get engaged with. And the flip side there is there's something with metal. It's like I can't listen to it and not get invested in the emotional side of it, whether it's positive or negative. Like I feel like I take on whatever the emotion of that is. And it's interesting that, yeah, we're taking on the people. We're getting in love with the people as much as it is the, the sonic aspects of it. Um, and so, yeah, it's been interesting to chat with them on that human level of like, yeah, is it scary to be on stage? Like, those are questions that you would never talk about um, or that an artist would never want to share publicly. Also, a lot of the people you're interviewing are just straight badasses. Like, yeah. I can't wait to finish watching the Matt interview. Like, I love that <laughs> I dude appreciate with that. all my heart. <laughs> it's been fun. It's been fun. And I think uh, someone like Matt's a perfect example of someone that I don't know too well or didn't know too well before that. And I always chatted. We'd message through Instagram or something. But yeah, when would we have ever sat down at a table? And when would you have I have ever sat down at dude, a table and chatted? He, he's going to be the yeah. guitar player in Meshuggah. I'm calling it now. Like, he is that guy. You've got a good track record with college shots. So I'm I'll... calling it. I'm calling it. Like, there's three things that mm -hmm. I called. Please. It's, Matt is going to be the guitar player in Meshuggah. Okay. okay. Crown Magnetar is going to be the next biggest band. Okay. And that's it. But Okay. <laughs> those are my two. Call there's a third one inside somewhere. Yeah, I got to think of the other one. Uh, yeah, rule of threes. We'll get there. <laughs> um, hell yeah, man. I think that's a good, good place to wrap up. Uh, anything we didn't talk about that you would like to chat about that I should have asked about and didn't quite get to? Yeah, man. Like, uh, what about all your work? Like, I, I feel like you're killing it too. <laughs> what about my work? I don't know. I don't even think about my work. I was spending all my day thinking about your work and what we were going to talk about. I want to hear about your work, man. You're killing um, it. No, it's been fun. It's been a, a fun journey. Um, I don't know. I think I'm really enjoying getting into bigger projects. I think I used to do a lot more concerts and a lot more of stuff that was day to day and kind of same day turnaround, give or take. Um, and I've really enjoyed being able to craft bigger ideas and bigger stuff that feels more, more custom. I think when I, when I left concerts photographing, there was always kind of a sense of like, well, what makes me different than these other 10 people in the pit? And why is my photo different than theirs? And there are answers to that question, but none that felt good to me, none that I really liked. And I think with the video, I've really enjoyed that I'm creating something and not that the way I design the warehouse is the best way, but that that way is unique in this moment of time because I'm there and the band is there and no one else will ever be in this place with these people and these 10 tools and whatever. Um, so yeah, I think I've grown to enjoy that ability to kind of curate our own art as opposed to just going out and kind of finding the art. Well, I'll say it like this. I like a lot of your videos more than most people in the scene. <laughs> I appreciate And that. I don't think it has to do with the warehouse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it goes back to our earlier point is that, yeah, we talk about the camera and the lenses, but there are a hundred other stuff things. Matters. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I think it's the fact that you're a good dude that makes me like your videos. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And uh, I think that's probably true of most of the bands we like. And I, I don't know, I think I'd like to believe that. I don't know if that's totally true of being a good person gets you far. And I think no, we have, there's there's definitely there's a law of diminishing return where yeah. you're going to get shat on. Yeah. And it's not worth it. But, yep. yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I personally, uh, IMO, <laughs> I like your work for a reason. I appreciate it. And to some degree, I think that's all we can all we can work for, right? I mean, we're never going to please the internet people. My my favorite comment that I've ever gotten, or the one that sticks out of my head the most, is on one of my first videos. It was a playthrough that we filmed on like a beach. And someone comments that the guitar wasn't even plugged in. And in my brain, it was like, how, of course the fucking wasn't plugged. Like, how did you get all the way here and just talk about that? And the more I reflect on it, it's like, oh, if I did my job well enough that all they could complain about was a thing not being plugged in, then mission accomplished. Um, and I think that's always kind of stuck with me of like, yeah, just have fun with it. Someone's going to have a problem with it. And as long as I can make Eric happy or make the client happy or whoever the person is, it's like, yeah, that's all I can aim for. Um, so that's, yeah, exciting. And I'm, yeah, happy to be doing it, happy to be 
working in the industry that you've helped pave the way in. Uh, so it's been a yeah. Fun well, I'm process. happy that you're killing it, man, and I'm happy that you have time for things like this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel honored to be on your show, man. Absolutely, man. I'm sure the shit's going to blow up, too. <laughs> that's the third one. That's the third one. You yeah, can put that's it in That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Perfect, I yeah. would put a lot of money on you as uh, a person. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. So what is that? That's yeah. Matt's going to play guitar in Meshuggah. Yep. Crown Mag Guitar is going to be the next biggest deathcore band. There we go. And then I have full faith in you, and you're going to be <laughs> fucking huge. <laughs> I appreciate that, Matt. Thank you. Uh, that's a walk-off <laughs> right there. Um, as we get out of here, man, where can people find you online? What should they look up? What are, yeah, where can people be a fan of you? Um, you could search my band at at fyourselfband.com or Brilliant. f yourself <laughs> f yourself band um just something variation of f yourself we should pop up yep um and then i run the company square up studios mm-hmm. but you can usually just find that under my name eric de carlo awesome awesome and then uh someone who's never heard of you what is one song on the ep they should check out and one music video they should check out from, uh, from face yourself uh a face yourself song and then a music video you've directed um so the face yourself song if you're into really heavy music, our underrated song is Gross Bagar. Okay. Um, the French song, Big Fight. It's, uh, it's a heavy one. Check that one out. It's my favorite song. Hell yeah. Wrote it at 5 a.m. before the band even woke up. Um, and then my a music video to check out. Um, the obvious answer would be To the Hellfire because that's like the most gateway deathcore video mm-hmm. I, I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say definitely check out the Chelsea Grin Isness video because it's one of my favorites. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I agree. That's a good one to check out as well. Um, awesome. Thank you, man. I appreciate your time. And that is, that is all for today, folks. Appreciate it, man.